So let's start with a few questions about you. Where, where did you first find your, your calling as a filmmaker? I think it started when I was working in development and I worked on a film called The Thin Red Line and uh, it was a terrific script and uh, just the experience of helping to uh, do some of the research and, and uh, you know, be part of the development process of that movie was, was inspiring and um, I worked on a lot of other exciting projects at that time and I just, I knew that that's what I wanted to be doing. Your first movie was the romantic comedy The Kettle of Fish, A Kettle of Fish. Uh, what made you want to go from a, rom a, rom a, rom a romantic comedy to a war drama? It was uh, a, just a very organic process. Um, Fort Bliss was a direct outgrowth of my work. Uh, making films for and about the military community. Uh, when I moved to Washington, D.C., I started, um, the first project I worked on was actually a, a training film for the Army that I shot at Fort Bliss in Texas. And, uh, and that was the, the germ of what became Fort Bliss. So the film depicts um, a young mother coming back home from Afghanistan where she, was on, she had a tour there. Uh, she serves as a medic in the Army and, uh, her and it depicts her struggle coming back to civilian life and especially reconnecting with her son. So are these stories common from what you know in the, in the military community? I think soldiers face enormous challenges when they come home. You know, my film is about a woman and about really the, the, the challenge to become a parent again to her child, which resonates with me personally as a parent. Um, but I think there's so much involved in that experience, um, such an emotional, uh, a ch change that happens when you come back from combat and have to reintegrate into civilian life. And there are so many expectations of how things are going to be, and the reality is often so different. So uh, your, your main character is, is very particular in many ways. She's a woman, which is something we don't commonly see in soldiers' films. She's a medic, which is another aspect of it that we don't usually get to see. What, what motivated you to, to make her so unique? Her being a woman is obviously something that was um, central to the story. I knew I wanted to tell uh, a story of a working mother, and um, so it really started with that idea rather than it being a soldier. It, uh, the character became a soldier once I became exposed to you know, the experience of soldiers and combat veterans and, I, and, and, and how rich and complicated it was. Why a medic? She was actually, in my very, very first uh, concept of the film, she was a, she was a maintenance platoon leader. She, she did mechanical things. And I just felt that that was, I wanted to convey that she wasn't a victim, that she was someone who really uh, got a great sense of, of purpose from her career. And I, and I realized that being a medic, saving people's lives, that was uh, a level of commitment and a sense of purpose that I felt m more people would connect with. Your film is about a woman in a, in a man's world. And filmmaking is very much a man's world still today. So in the past few months that we have had some voices that had, that had risen, we had uh, Kate Blanchett at the Oscars with her acceptance speech, and we had the very talked about article by Alexi Alexander, the Oscar-nominated short film director. Um, what, what are your stand on the issue of women in Hollywood and, and film in general? Um, I think it's a fact that there are uh, fewer women directors working in Hollywood uh, than men. Um, however, it is also a fact that there are a lot of talented women directors working. Um, so you know, is there a way to redress the balance? I certainly hope so. I think it's important to, to talk about the issue, to, to draw attention to the, to the imbalance, and to try and rectify it. I also think it's important not just in terms of women making movies, but I think films about women are too scarce. Only 15% of, of, you know, the top 200 films feature female protagonists. Um, and so I, I'm personally really invested in trying to focus uh, and tell stories about about women, um, that's something that interests me because I don't think there's enough of it. So the film centers around um, the female character that we, st we spoke of, which is played by Michelle Monaghan, which we've seen mostly in very, very impressive works, True Detective, last, uh, last, lastly. Where, how did you make that connection and um, manage to get her in your, in your movie? I've admired Michelle's work, you know, for a very long time. Uh, so I, and I felt that she had all the qualities that I wanted in this character, um, but I hadn't seen them in a single role. Uh, you know, the way we got her was we, we have, we had terrific casting directors on the movie and we sent her the script 
and her, um, her agent was really, really receptive and actually excited about the project um, for her. So um, it was, you know, it started like that and, and meeting her and uh, I think she just really responded to the material and she's a mom and I think part of it just resonated with her as well. Did you, did you get to rewrite some of the parts maybe to better fit her? Did you work together on creating the character? I don't think I rewrote the part to better fit her because she's such a great actress that she can do anything. Um, but I did, uh, we did go through the script page by page and we, we talked about every single scene and there were some suggestions that she had that were really good that uh, I did incorporate, of course. So how long was the shooting? We shot it in 21 days. This is short. For it was time. short. <laughs> so did you have any help from the army to access to maybe um, materials or locations? The Army was instrumental in making Fort Bliss. Uh, and actually, I started the process of getting Army support nine months to a year before we went into production. Uh, so it was a very lengthy process, and it had to, the script had to go through a number of approvals all the way up to the Defense Department. Um, but once we got their, their support, um, they gave us access to Fort Bliss, the post itself, where we shot not just the training scenes, but also the Afghanistan deployed scenes uh, using, you know, training villages and so forth to, to give the illusion of being in Afghanistan. They helped train Michelle. We did a, a sort of a crash medical training course with Michelle down at Fort Bliss before, ahead of the shoot. Um, they, uh, and then they gave us access to their, you know, to vehicles and I just, uh, you know, it, it gave the film so much dimension and so much, um, I, I think, a level of authenticity we never would have achieved without them. What would be your worst memory from this, from this set, from this shooting? I think a bad moment was um, we were shooting a scene in a, in a park uh, and it was 104 degrees and we were, um, I was very concerned for the health of the cast and crew and the, um, the, uh, the studio teacher who was looking out for Oaks uh, said he was going to pull him in 15 minutes and so I had 15 minutes to shoot one scene and I got one take of everything. It was just, that was, that was a low moment just because the, you know, the stress and the concern for people's health was, you know, was, so it was an extreme version of, you know, having very little time. And what would be your best memory then? I feel like the whole shoot itself was a terrific experience. When I think about the film, I think how fortunate I was to work with such a committed cast. And it was really demanding for the actors. It was really demanding for the crew. I just had great collaborators all around. So I, almost every scene in the film, I feel like was a positive experience. I guess one comes to mind in particular, which was the homecoming scene in the film. Uh, because as a very low budget movie, we didn't have money to pay extras. And so we put out a call in the community in El Paso for people to come and, and volunteer essentially to be part of our film. And 100 people showed up with their with their children, and um, and uh, and I just think it gave the scene such an energy. And there were people that had been through homecomings that had either sent, uh, you know, um, somebody in their family had been deployed. They had welcomed back, you know, a brother or a son or a, a sister or a wife. And um, and so that that scene to me really captures what the film was about: this the spirit of really coming together to do something we all felt was important. What would be your, your next project? Do you have something on the works? I'm developing a couple of screenplays right now. Um, I'm actually working on a, uh, a film that takes place in Paris, uh, an American character who comes to Paris. So um, I'm excited about that. Is it a comedy? Can you say a few words? Can you tease us with something? Uh, it takes place in the underground music world of Paris. Mm. Nice. Well, thank you very much for coming. Thank you, thank you for coming and uh, we'll see you around the festival. Thank you so much for having me.